Good day, Brawlies. You know what? Just as I was done deciding which keyboard I'm going to use for the upcoming setup tour video, here comes another contender that could fit right into the theme that I'm going after. The Halo 65 is the latest mechanical keyboard from the company that brought us arguably the best low-profile wireless mechanical keyboards in the form of the Air 60 and the Air 75. The Nufi Halo 65 is a 65% wireless mechanical keyboard that offers some unique design and functional characteristics that brings in new and refreshing ideas while maintaining the design language the brand is known for. Nufi has done a tremendous job at implementing pretty much most of the things that enthusiasts are looking for on a modern mechanical keyboard with silicon dampeners all over the place including the plate, PCB, bottom casing, and even underneath the spacebar. Even the stabilizers are also pre-lubed and partnered with the pre-lubed new Gateron switches. They also paid so much attention to designing the RGB illumination, so much so that they decided to come up with the so-called Halo Light, which I'll explain in detail in this video. Not to mention all the other features such as tri-mode connectivity, hot swap sockets, multi-platform compatibility, and a bunch of other aspects. I'm still baffled by how Nufi is able to keep their keyboards around US$100 or so, especially considering the quality and uniqueness of their products. It's not perfect though, nothing is anyways, so let's check everything it has to offer. Let's get into it. Alright, so the packaging, like their previous Air series, is also quite nice, with an outer sleeve featuring some of its key features and other details about the product, partnered with an anime illustration at the back, which I noticed is a different character from the Air series. We also have here the two-tone wrist rest made out of acrylic and aluminum, and a set of baby kangaroo switches, which is one of Gatron's latest offerings. Now inside the box, we have some stickers and the user guide, a protective cover for the keyboard, and the Halo 65 itself, also protected with plastic. We also have a bunch of accessories underneath with some Gatron switches, additional accent keycaps, a switch and keycap puller, and a braided USB Type-C cable. Lastly, we have another paperwork, which is apparently a sort of FAQ guide for troubleshooting. Luffy really pays attention to detail by providing these nifty accessories inside the package that I really appreciate. Like I said, we also have a bunch of stickers and a user guide that also doubles as a poster, albeit with some creases. Now, at first look and touch, the Nufi Halo 65 has some decent weight to it, roughly around 972 grams. It doesn't flex much and is made out of a combination of hard plastic bottom case and aluminum top cover. It features a 65% form factor with 67 keys, including some of the nav cluster keys, dedicated arrow keys, and alphanumeric keys. In order to accommodate this form factor, we have a smaller right shift and the right control key was removed. Other than that, a pretty standard ANSI layout overall. We also have a multi-function LED indicator here on the left side and a Nufi logo here on the right. Overall, a pretty clean design language, especially this white variant. Now, flipping it on the front side, you'll see a better view of the two different materials for the casing with an aluminum top cover and a plastic bottom case. It also has some grooves on the bottom case that apparently were inspired by the ionic columns in ancient Greece that when partnered with the halo light create a water flow like visual effect. The bottom plastic actually has its own purpose which is to allow for better wireless reception, improving stability and power efficiency. Remember, the Air 60 and Air 75 also features plastic bottom cases and aluminum top housing. Now, the bottom case also features an angled form factor for a more ergonomic typing experience partnered with Nufi's own KOP keycaps. Flipping it at the back side, we have the 2.4GHz USB dongle, nicely tucked in a dedicated magnetic compartment. We also have the connectivity switch between off, wired and wireless, and the USB Type-C port here. And finally, turning it all over at the bottom, we have 4 rubber feet, 4 flip-out stands including 2 shorter ones, and a nice chrome badge at the center. Overall, a very nice and clean looking keyboard that in a lot of ways resembles the design language we've loved or hate from the Air series. Going back in front, the Nufi KOP keycaps for the most part is relatively clean with sub-legends only on the numbers row and like the low-profile Coast PBD keycaps, we also have the iconic Nufi accent colors. We also have some sort of braille notches on the keys F and J for the home keys. The fonts are also nice and clean and look quite consistent in terms of alignment and thickness. Remember, if you don't like the color of the default accent keycaps, you can always replace them with the one included in the package. The keycaps are made out of durable PBT plastic with double shot material dedicated to the legends. This means it will never fade away over time and due to the nature of the PBT plastic, it will also not shine that easily compared to ABS plastic. 
The keycap's thickness is around 1.4 mm, which is decent enough to provide a deeper sound signature. The new VKOP keycaps also features an ergonomically rounded corner with an almost flat surface. It is not as short as the popular Cherry Profile, but not as tall as the SA Profile either. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison just in case you're interested. It's pretty close to the OEM Profile, but with a significantly rounded corners. Now, included in the package that Nufi sent me is the two-toned breast rest made out of a combination of acrylic and aluminum. Underneath it, we have four rubber feet to keep this thing stay in place, and overall, it looks equally clean and sleek and perfectly matches the aesthetics of the Nufi Halo 65. This frosted acrylic material actually accounted for the overall halo effect partnered with the side RGB illumination. As you can tell, the illumination translates to the wrist rest with a soft and glowing effect. In terms of the switches, what we have here is the Gateron G Pro 2.0 Red variant, which is the improved version of both the classic and the original G Pro Gateron Reds, now with upgraded mold, pre-lubricated out of the factory and has better RGB SMD condenser. Included in the package is a sample of Gateron G Pro 2.0 Brown, which is tactile, white, which is a lighter version of the red, silver, which is the fastest in terms of travel time and is ideal for gaming, yellow, which is sort of a middle ground amongst the linear options with 50 grams of actuation force, the almighty loud and clicky blue, <laughs> and the red, which is also linear and the one we have on this keyboard. And lastly, we have the BB Kangaroo, which is Gateron's latest tactile switch. Speaking of the BB Kangaroo Switch, it features nylon PA66 bottom housing, polycarbonate top housing, bright green palm for the stem, 22mm two-stage gold-plated spring, and is pre-lubricated out of the factory. It also features a long pole stem, as you can see here, which eliminates the interference when used with a cherry profile keycap on a north-facing socket, which this keyboard unfortunately has. More on that later, but overall, my impression about the BB Kangaroo Switch is that unlike the traditional Gatron Brown, or most mainstream brown switches, this one offers a significantly stronger tactile bump and a smoother feel out of the box. Like I said, the Halo 65 features north-facing hot swap socket, which might be a deal breaker for some, but as I've pointed out in my previous video, isn't a total deal breaker anymore, especially in today's modern era, with a bunch of good long pole switches to choose from, including these baby kangaroo switches. Besides, the new VKOP keycaps and the Gateron G Pro 2.0 switches or the BB Kangaroo switches are already good out of the box. Not to mention that the plate mount stabilizers are also fairly decent with a substantial amount of lubricant. Later, I'll share with you some sound comparisons between the Gateron G Pro 2.0 Red, the BB Kangaroo, and a modded version of the Halo 65. By the way, I noticed that my Halo 65 spacebar has a BB Kangaroo switch out of the box, which is weird. I'm not sure if this is normal, but there's that. Now in terms of the connectivity options, here at the back we have the switch for power, wired and wireless modes. Color green for 2.4GHz wireless mode, blue for Bluetooth mode, and orange for wired mode. Alright, let's talk about the different functionalities of this keyboard, and then we'll take a look at the lighting effects, especially the halo light, and we'll end this video with the teardown process and some sound comparisons. The new Fee Halo 65 is compatible with both Windows and Mac OS, but mostly tailored to Mac users, especially with the default keycaps and its Mac OS-centric shortcuts. For wireless connectivity like the Air series, you can connect up to 4 devices, 3 via Bluetooth and 1 via the 2.4GHz wireless frequency, which is ideal for lower latency performance. The multi-function LED indicator here in the upper left corner has been streamlined, combining the functionalities of the two LED indicators on the Air series. Now in terms of RGB illumination and lighting effects, here's how it looks in a completely dim environment. As you can tell, the illumination is bright enough with vibrant colors thanks to the combination of the SMD LEDs, the sort of magnifier on the switch's top housing, and the white plate that bounces off the illumination. There are lighting indicators for caps lock and windows lock, and a bunch of key combinations for changing in between lighting modes. Now, what's cool about this is that the illumination for the individual keys is separate from the side illumination of the halo light, which makes customization more extensive. I'm not going to show all the lighting effects, but using the key combinations and the keyboard's onboard memory, you can adjust the brightness, change the speed of the animation, and choose individual colors. And check this out, you can even change the lighting effects of the LED indicator in the upper left corner. This is good if you want to go for a particular single color theme. Partner that with the two-toned acrylic wrist rest and you'll get that ultimate halo light effect. Pretty freaking cool. Now, I would say that the Nufi Halo 65, like the Mojo 68 that I previously reviewed, is not meant to be taken apart. 
because it's already good out of the box with pretty much all the essential dampeners you'll ever need, lube stabilizers and switches, and a pretty decent set of keycaps. But for the completeness of this review, let me show you how to open this up. One thing that I appreciate about the design implementation of the halo light effect is the fact that they even considered removing the inner side wall of the aluminum top housing and adding a large diffuser. This allows users to see the halo light effect not just from the outside but also from the inside. And the fact that you can choose to turn off the illumination of the individual keys allows you to just showcase the halo light on its own. Pretty clever indeed. Now to tear this apart, the first thing you have to do after removing the keycaps and switches is to remove the screws from the plate. After that, you can firmly but gently pull the aluminum top cover off which is clipped from the middle plastic diffuser. Mind you, this is kinda difficult to accomplish but later on, I figured that this is not completely necessary depending on what you are trying to accomplish. After removing the top cover, I immediately realized that this keyboard is actually made mostly out of plastic and that the aluminum top cover is just a fraction of the overall build. The middle translucent diffuser is made out of plastic as well as the bottom case. Like I said earlier, I don't think removing the aluminum top cover is necessary to access the internals since the plastic bottom case is just screwed on the plate. Now here on the bottom case, we have the 4000 mAh of battery, the magnetic compartment for the USB dongle, and the daughter board for the USB Type-C port and the switch. We also have here a dense silicon dampener to remove or at least reduce the hollow sound of the bottom case. As for the PCB, as anyone could guess, the universal hot swap sockets are made by Gateron. After removing the 5 screws, we can now lift the plate and it's actually screwed into the plastic diffuser. This plate is also made out of steel rather than aluminum which is probably one way of minimizing the overall cost of this keyboard. But still, I'm still baffled by the fact that all of their keyboards including the Air series are just around 100 US dollars, again considering the quality and uniqueness of their design and features. We also have a silicon dampener here in between the PCB and plate and another silicon right on top of the PCB mimicking the effect of the popular PE foam mod. You can also see here all the LEDs around the PCB and on the individual keys for a total of 65 RGB LEDs. Now while we're at it, I'll replace the stock stabilizers with one of the stabilizer set that I previously modded using my trusted Micropore wire mod. If you want to learn how I do it, you can watch my previous Everglide SK68 video. To be fair, the stock stabilizers of the Halo 65 are already pretty decent, but since I've already taken this keyboard apart, might as well replace it so we can include that in the sound comparison later. And while the Halo 65 already has all the dampeners we'll ever need, I still decided to add the popular tape mod in hopes that I can make the sound signature of this keyboard poppier than its default configuration. By the way, we also have a couple of silicon dampeners underneath the spacebar, which is awesome. Now, all we have to do is put it all back together by reversing the teardown process. And for the final build, we're going to use the Baby Kangaroo tactile switches and compare them with the stock Gator and G Pro 2.0 Red which is significantly quieter in terms of sound signature. Again, I think you don't need to painstakingly remove the top cover to do the things I've done inside. By the way, before the sound comparisons, in terms of performance, I just want to share with you that the Nuvi Halo 65 features a fully functional key rollover on all modes including the wireless modes. This means you can press as many keys as you want at the same time without conflicts. Alright, so here are some sound test comparisons for you guys.
Let me know in the comments below what you think about the sound signature of the Nufi Halo 65 in terms of both the stock configuration and the final build. Overall, I'd say the typing experience on the Nufi Halo 65 is quite stiff but at least the sound signature is clean without any pinging or hollow sound even on its stock configuration. Without the modifications, the spacebar is pretty loud and the sound signature is on the clacky side but with the modifications, the sound became tighter and poppier with better sounding modifiers, especially the spacebar. Now, just a quick share of thought, here's an example that the sound of a keyboard highly varies depending on its construction even though it has the same switches and keycaps. So this one is um, BB Kangaroo, BB Kangaroo, Zaku and Zaku. And lastly, as much as I want to share with you the Nufi console software, as of the time of making this review, the Halo 65 isn't compatible yet, unfortunately. Alright, so to conclude, if you're looking for a highly customizable mechanical keyboard, the Nufi Halo 65 is probably not the one. But if you're looking for a pre-built mechanical keyboard that not only is already good out of the box, but also offers some design language that you haven't seen before, especially if you fancy RGB lighting, then this should be on top of your list. It offers some of the bare essentials anyone is looking for on a decent mechanical keyboard like silicon dampeners, pre-loop stabilizers and switches, and a pretty good set of keycaps. And the final kicker is probably the price. It's relatively affordable for everything it has to offer. Of course, it's not perfect. It uses north-facing sockets, not a gasket mount which most people prefer, and uses a very stiff steel plate. But honestly, all of its pros greatly outweigh its shortcomings. And there you have it guys, thank you for watching. Huge thanks to Nufi for sending this in and I think the pre-order for this is still ongoing until September 9 so you can take advantage of the freebies and discounts. You can also use my code BROLL for an extra 10% off. Check the link below if you're interested. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you like this and see you next time. Have a great day guys, you're awesome.